I'm going to be talking about the electric field. Now, we talked about the electric force. The magnitude of the electric force is given by the, prod the Coulomb constant times the product of the two charges. But now we want to talk about the environment seen by a generic object. What, what does it see before we've decided how large the charge is and, um, and its sign? Um, so we use the electric field, um, which is the Coulomb constant times, or the electric field given by, K, by charge one is the Coulomb constant times the charge of Q1 divided by the distance from the point to Q1. Um, so it's like dividing by Q2. And um, then we think about what would happen to a test charge in this electric field without having to specify what the charge is and what its sign is. So here you can see the electric field um, at point P, um, so at one discrete point right here. Um, and we consider the impact of various charges. So the electric field tells you where a positive charge would go, a positive test charge. Um, it helps to always think about a positive um, test charge. Uh, so charge one right here is positive. So the electric field from charge one is going to point away from charge one. Um, likewise for charge two, except that it is now a little closer to the test to point P. So the electric field electric field from charge two is a little bit larger. Um, the charge from point four also from charge four also points away from charge four because it is also positive. Um, you will see that this is the farthest point from charge from point four, so it's the smallest arrow. Um, and uh, then for the negative charges, because you're always asking where a positive charge would go, um, the electric field from charge three is pointing towards charge three. And likewise, for the electric field from charge five, it points towards charge five. And if you want to figure out the total electric field at point P, you have to add up all of the charges. Um, and you can use, do this using vector addition and just doing it roughly by I, the net electric field is gonna be somewhere in that direction. Um, so that sort of makes sense because the negative charges would pull your positive test charge towards them and your positive charges would push your test charge away from them. Um, so in the example of a helium um, atom, the nucleus has a positive charge um, of magnitude two times the electron charge. Um, we know that the electron is attracted to the helium nucleus, but the electric field in the helium um, in the helium ion in the helium atom is actually away from the nucleus because the electric field tells us where a positive test charge would want to go. So if you are sitting right here and you are a positive charge, you are going to want to run away from that nucleus as fast as you can. Um, now, you can use something, you can often use symmetry in physics. Symmetry is your, is your friend. Um, so our undergraduates here know me for a phrase. A good physicist is a lazy physicist. What that means is that you do not want to work any harder than you have to. You want to try to come up with clever tricks to let you do less work because you're more likely to get the right answer if you can see the trick. You can also check your answer even if you do the ugly math anyway. Um, so here we have a situation where you have two positive charges, a distance D apart, um, and you want to know the electric field at a point P above them. Um, so we can use symmetry here and what that means is that you know the the system is symmetric about this line. Um, so the answer should be on the left side should be the mirror image of the answer on the right side. The way to accomplish that is if you only have an electric field um, in this direction, because um, any other electric field would break the symmetry. 
So um, you can also get that by breaking the pieces um, apart and saying, well, the electric field from this one is roughly like that, and the electric field from that one is roughly like that. Um, and I need to draw them to scale. The reason why I am a physicist and not an artist. So you draw them roughly to scale. And um, you can use vector addition. And what you see is that the um, that this component um, from the left charge cancels this component from the right charge so that your net force is all in this direction.